John has been working at any company retail as an agent for around a year now. In this demo, we will see him reviewing his schedule, requesting time off, and accepting overtime request from his manager. John logs into work to start his day by going to the agent workspace where he spends his time attending phone calls and supporting customers through different channels. He has all the tools he needs in one single interface so that he does not have to switch between multiple applications to do his job. John is planning on a vacation and would like to request a time off, so he goes to his schedule. On his schedules, he sees that there are a couple of pending items for the week. So he goes to the request drawer to view what's inside. John sees that one of the pending items is for an available overtime shift. And he could use some extra income for the vacation he's planning. So he goes to accept the overtime request and provides a reason for approval. He sees that the request is pending as he waits for either his supervisor or the system to auto approve his request. John now starts to request his time off for the vacation. He fills out the date ranges and submits his request. After he submits the PTO request, he sees that it's pending and checks to see if his overtime request was approved. He sees that the pending overtime block does not look like pending anymore. So he goes to the request drawer to verify if the overtime request was approved and looks like it was. Now he goes to the time off tab upon checking, he sees that his time off request was approved and verifies by looking at his schedule. Now that he has accepted an overtime shift, got his time off, he moves on to do his day-to-day -day job in the agent workspace. This makes it easy for John to request time off and manage his schedule within his agent workspace because this is where he spends most of the time of his day. Diego is a supervisor at any company retail. In this demo, you will see how Diego uses the supervisor view to track schedule changes, request overtime, voluntary time off and manage the time off request all from one single interface. Next week is a big day for any company. They are launching a new line of athletic shoes that has gained a ton of social media attention, so they need to staff accordingly. Diego is in the admin console. In the admin console, he is able to review the Monday schedule and is able to dive deeper into specific time ranges to make sure that the contact center is operating at capacity. Diego can look at the metrics to detect understaffing or overstaffing and make adjustments based on the data. He can click into a specific time to view the staffing metrics to see more details. He clicks to see the blue box at two and sees that he's overstaffed by one during that time. Looking on the right side of the metrics, he sees the maturity of the time in the evening shift is pink, which means he's understaffed. Agents whose schedules are grayed out are the agents not scheduled for that specific day. Diego exits the detail view and sees a notification in the request drawer. He clicks on it to find out the new request. Remember when we saw John put in his PTO request? He sees the request that John submitted. Diego approves the request, making a comment saying, have a great vacation. Diego approves the time of request this time, but he also has the ability to automate the process to handle agent's request at scale. Diego knows that he does not have enough agent staff to deliver a great customer experience for the launch next week. So he continues to his next goal, creating new overtime shifts for the increase in the volume that any company expects for the new launch. Diego goes to request three overtime shifts so any three of his agents can accept the request for that day. 
His agents will see these requests in the request drawer, a pending overtime request, just like we saw with John earlier. Knowing that any company needs to staff up for the increased volume next week, Diego looks at how his agents are currently adhering to their schedule. So he goes to the real-time metrics to view his agents' adherence and sees that there are some agents who are not adherent. Going into next week, Diego feels comfortable based off the information given to him that they will be staffed appropriately to provide a great customer experience for their new product launch. Jane is the forecaster for any company retail and is responsible for forecasting future demand for their contact center. In this demo, you will see how she generates forecast with just a few clicks, compares the forecast and applies the override to account the upcoming launch. Today, Jane wants to publish a forecast so that her colleagues can use the forecast to generate capacity plans and schedules. Jane can generate forecast in just a few clicks. The short term forecasts are computed automatically every day. So she always has the forecast based on the latest data from their contact center. And long term forecasts are automatically computed weekly. This forecast was generated with the purpose built machine learning model to accurately forecast call volume and the average handling time. Jane looks through the computed short term forecast and views the different volumes according to queues and channels, which helps her be able to predict workloads for different teams or lines of businesses. In this forecast, she can see that it was created for two queues and one channel. If she wants to group a forecast based on queues or channels, she can check or uncheck the boxes. Next, Jane compares the computed forecast with the last published one and decides to look at the actual volume compared to what it was last year. Jane sees that the forecast hasn't taken into account the upcoming marketing promotion around their launch of their new line of athletic shoes, which she knows will bring in additional contact volume. So she goes to apply an override for the days that the marketing promotion is happening. After the override has completed, Jane sees the override data in the graph. Jane is satisfied with the override and publishes the forecast, which allows the long-term planner and scheduler to use the forecast to generate capacity plans and schedules. Paolo is our long-term planner for any company. In this demo, you will see him generate capacity plans based on different service level targets as they input. Paolo looks out 6 to 12 months to ensure the contact center has the appropriate number of agents hired trained and ready to handle customer interactions to meet their SLAs. Paolo's goal for the day is to provide two capacity plans to determine how many agents are needed to meet the SLA for the leadership to review. Paolo goes to the planning scenarios and generates two planning scenarios, one for 80% service level achieved within 30 seconds and the other one for 90% service level achieved within 30 seconds. He creates a planning scenario for 80% service level achieved within 30 seconds and does the same for 90% service level achieved within 30 seconds. Paolo uses the planning scenarios and the forecast group that Jane published to create two capacity plans for the second half of the year. Paolo goes to the generated capacity plans and is able to see all the information he needs in order to make an informed decision on if they need to hire more agents to meet the SLA. Now Paolo exports those capacity plans and is now ready to meet with the leadership to review how many more full-time equivalents they might need to continue hitting their service level. Mary is our scheduler 
and is responsible for creating schedules to staff the right number of agents to meet the business requirements. In this demo, you will see her create a new shift profile, staffing group, and generate a schedule for the agents. To perform her role, she needs to take into account labor laws, location, time zone, and full-time versus part-time agents when making the schedule. Any company is expanding their business to Sydney, Australia, and needs to have agent staff to work in their local time next month. Mary starts off by creating a new shift profile for the agents to be associated with. Mary adds a new shift profile, sets the time zone and working hours according to Sydney time. She also adds daily activities required by labor laws such as break and lunch. The schedule creation takes into account these activities and staggers the shift adhering to the rules while meeting the service levels. Mary finishes creating the shift profile. She now creates a new staffing group to assign agents to work using the shift profile she just created. Here, Mary can decide to enable time of request and if supervisor needs to approve it or let the system automatically decide. Mary associates this staffing group with the forecast that Jane published. Now she goes to create a new schedule with 80% service level within 30 seconds as the optimization input from Paolo's meeting with the leadership for capacity plans. Mary waits for the schedule to generate. Once the schedule generation is complete, Mary goes to review it to ensure that there are no significant understaffing or overstaffing situation. Mary is satisfied with the schedule generation and publishes the schedule, making it available for agents like John and supervisors like Diego to see and use. Now that Mary has published the schedule, she needs to look at the historical metrics for agent adherence to understand how agents have behaved for the last month's schedule. Mary goes to the historical metrics and chooses agent performance. Once there, she modifies the settings to include the agent adherence metrics. Mary sees that the agents are generally adhering to the schedule and now continues with her other responsibilities.